So turn with me to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. So now, what have, we, what have we seen? God created man with dominion. God gave the earth to the children of men, right? We know that, uh, yeah, that if our gospel is hid, it's hid to those that are lost because Satan has blinded the eyes of those that are lost, right? We know uh, that the devil was given the, the, the world systems and that he can give it to whoever he wants, and he became, now think about this, he, be, he was an angel, but he became the God of this world, right? Which, okay, now here we're going to kill some sacred cows and probably stir up some religious devils, right? <clears throat> if Satan was an angel, a fallen angel, which put him at the bottom of the pack, so to speak, right? Even though he was listed more or less as what most people would call as an archangel type, but he now was at the very lowest because he's a fallen angel. But, now think, why would a fallen angel or would a fallen angel want to accept a position lesser than what he was? No, nobody ever wants a lesser position, right? So for this fallen angel to want the earth, then becoming the God of this world had to be a step up. Does that make sense? So it had to be a step up for him to be the God of this world. How did he get to be God of this world? Adam gave it to him which means that Adam was the God of this world. Why? Because he had total dominion over it. Now, little g, you understand, he wasn't divine, understand? When we say God of this world, we mean the ruler and, and literally a supreme being over a certain area. So you could have a God over an area that is not God. Even Paul says at one point, you were doing service unto God's, which were not even gods. They were actually demons. But people worshiped them like gods and served them like gods. So are, are, we, are we clear on this? And when we say God, like with a little g like this, that we're not talking about divinity, right? Adam was not divine, but he was the supreme being over the earth because God made him the supreme being over the earth. He was put in a position. Does that make sense? And whenever Satan, uh, when Lucifer became Satan, and whenever he began exercising that dominion, he wanted the authority over this earth. He got Adam to bow his knee to him and obey him rather than obey God. So by that one act of disobedience and thereby one act of obedience, at that point, Satan became the god of this world. Does that, does that make sense? Now, and now, if you look at this, if you go to uh, John chapter 10, you don't have to go there right now, but if you look later at John 10, uh, verse 34 too, Jesus even said, it says in your scriptures, I said, ye are gods. Right. And he was talking to men, meaning they were the authorities. Or in other words, supreme authorities over that area. Does that make sense? See, now see, if you start to understand this, you'll see why God doesn't just, not doesn't do it. God cannot do certain things on this earth. Why? Because he gave dominion to man. Amen. He never took it back. He didn't say this is conditional. But he gave dominion to man, and that's why God cannot just jump in and do anything anywhere. He has to work through a man. Does that make sense? So uh, John Wesley said, that, said it this way. He said, it seems as though God can do nothing on this earth except he first get a man to pray. Think about that. Why? Because the man, ha that's why he tells us to pray God's will be done. We start praying God can work through us. Why? Amen. Because God cannot just come into the earth. Listen, if God could just come to the earth and do anything he wants, he is guilty of every sickness, every death, everything, every malady, every problem. If he can do something and doesn't, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So immediately God would become a sinner if he knew to do good and did not do it. Do you see that? So he knows to do good. He wants to do it. But legally, he cannot do it until a man he works in conjunction with him. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. See, if you get this picture, you realize why. And you'll, you'll never blame God for bad things again. And, and then whenever somebody says, well, you know, why did God let this happen? Then your automatic response is, why did you let it happen? Why? Because you have authority in your life. You have the authority of these things. You, you have the right to dictate. You have the right to speak, and your, uh, the, the words you say will come to pass, he said. 
so you can dictate the course of your life. Amen? Amen. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have an enemy. It doesn't mean you're going to have a perfect life and never any problems. No, the devil is there to try to cause you problems. But if you have been fooled to the point where you think that whatever happens is from God, then you're not even going to put up a fight. You just, well, you know, the will of the Lord be done. And then and the devil comes in and kills your family, kills your pets, you know, whatever it is, kills all that stuff, brings killing, stealing, and destroying. And yet you say it's of God. Why? Because you don't know the fact that you have been given authority to protect your family, to protect yourself, to protect your area, any area you have jurisdiction over. When you go to work at a place, that place should immediately prosper. It should begin prospering because you're there. And when you take vacation, things could actually drop. Yes. When, you, when you get away from it, you're not. Why? Because it should be blessed because you're there. Amen. You can go back and read this. All through the Old Testament, this is what happened. All through the Old Testament. Just because somebody walked with God, what, whatever they were doing got blessed, even if they worked for people that weren't too good. Amen? Amen. 